All right, friends, welcome back. For those who don't know me, I'm Matt Michelotis, author of the young adult fantasy novel, The Crescent Stone, and I'm so thrilled that today we have our special guest, Ash Parsons. Uh, hey, hey, Ash. Hey. And Ash is the author of multiple books, but the most recent is Girls Save the World in this one, which is just a delightful book. Just love it, Ash. Yay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you it, for having me. Oh, yeah. So this just came out. Was it last week or was it two weeks ago? The 13th. So 13th. two weeks okay. ago. Yeah, a little. Yeah. Almost two weeks. <laughs> okay. Time. Great. Ooh, what is it? It's a, it's a meaningless construct now. <laughs> <laughs> I know for all of us, right? That's what. Uh, okay. This is a, uh, uh, this is a funny question. Uh, this is a book that it's not about the end of the world in some sense, uh, but it is about zombies and the threat of the end of the world. And as I was yeah. reading it, I was like, this feels different than a year ago if I had been reading this. <laughs> like, I'm actually right. like, these people could be in trouble and be stuck in their homes because of zombies. <laughs> like, have you felt any of that as it's been? You know, yeah, the wildest thing is obviously, you know, from writing books that it's been about a year plus that it's been written. You right, know, it's been right. written for a while and then the whole edits process and the publishing process takes a while. And I've had so many people joke with me about, well, you know, some some PR blitz you put together. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, in one way, it's like it's it's perfect timing. But in other ways, of course, we're all sad that we can't do our reader events in person and we right. can't do, um, you know, going to cons or whatever, because <laughs> this right. is set at a con. But having said that, the the timing is kind of creepy, pretty good, because mm -hmm. it is about being trapped in a place. And in their, in their instance, they're trapped at a zombie fan convention right. where the actual zombie apocalypse happens while yeah. they're there and they get locked in. And uh, <laughs> so I was like, you know, it has to be for me, it's always been about a love of zombies. Mm. So that's been great. But yeah, that that trapped feeling is kind of yeah. kind of prescient eerily. That I love to like people who aren't familiar with zombies may not know that there's actually a pretty good tradition of comedy in zombie movies, whether yes. it's from the situation or just <laughs> things that happen or they're straight out comedies too. But Z my daughter, Zoe, uh, who's 19 was reading ahead of me because she's much faster <laughs> reader it. than I am. And uh, she, she was at the very end of the book and she just starts laughing hysterically. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> and she's like, Oh, you'll see, you'll see. Uh, which I thought was really, but Fantastic. I laughed out loud well, multiple times. Yeah. Well, I've just been, I, I was saying to a friend that, you know, my first memory of seeing a zombie movie was at my best friend's house. And my mom would not have let me. I was, you know, too young, but it was Night of the Living Dead around Halloween time on television. Oh, and wow. I was just transfixed, <laughs> you know. And yeah. then they, I think they were doing a marathon or shortly thereafter, we, we prevailed upon her parents who were more uh, loose, loose the mind to, uh -huh. to rent us all the sequels, all the related ones we could uh -huh. find. And they did a remake of it in color in the 80s, I guess. Yeah. And there was this hilarious scene of when, the, when they're showing all the shots of after the, the aftermath of all the people who are still around, there's a bunch of rednecks in a corral wrestling a, a zombie <laughs> just like it's wwe or wwf right. <laughs> and it was like that kind of humor is laced throughout all of zombie dumb basically right you know they're coming right. to get you barbara <laughs> and you're like no they are though <laughs> so i love that and that's why i think i loved you know Shaun mm -hmm. of the dead so much and zombie land and, and i think it's just rife for humor but yet we're always scared of zombies they're, they yeah. never stop being scary Right. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, hey, for those who have never listened in before on these live casts, if you put a comment, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, uh, I can bring it up on the screen here. So if you have questions for Ash uh, or, or comments, feel free to leave them. We got a couple people who are just saying hello. So Patrick Fogarty awesome. says, hey, Matt. Hey, Ash, I'm here. Hey. And hey. Uh, the, the Scales family says hi from the Scales family. We are super hello. excited to hear from Ms. Ash. Awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey, tell us a little <laughs> bit about, um, I want to get kind of into the book and I have a bunch of thoughts and questions for you, but tell us a <laughs> little bit about your writer's journey. How did you, how did you decide you wanted to write books and how did that happen? Cause oh, this to is your start with, this is third, my third, third book. I yeah. actually, I actually am prepared. What oh, a you have them? Oh, great. So I'm going to show you. This is my first book. Okay. Still, Still Waters. Waters looks like a which is like a thriller. It's gritty. It's a gritty. Yeah, it's a okay. film noir set in high school. Ooh. 
And then this is my second book, which just came out in paperback. Ah, let me learn how to do my camera. There ah, (laughs) there there it is. Holding on to you. Oh, nice. Which was published um, in hardback under a different title, which was The Falling Between Us. But it just came out. So I'm hoping they'll do a sale for it, actually, on um, Amazon for like an ebook or whatever. So these are all young adult, though. They're all young adult. But you've and then there's Girl Save the World within young adult. Within young adult, yeah, I've bounced around because Holding On to You is a contemporary uh, mystery romance, Mm -hmm. and so then, so the journey of writing is like I've always written. You know, you're probably the same. I, I was so excited to learn to read that I remember in first grade, I had checked out that book from the library. Are you my mother? Oh, and yeah. I love that, that book so much. And, the and P. I, P. Eastman did the, I uh, know it's the I classic. I, I still read that to my kids. And um, I had brought it home and I was at, with my mom at, at a friend's house and we were having an after school play date or something. And my mom said, do you have any homework? And I didn't, but I wished <laughs> I did. And I wished it was <laughs> writing a book. So I said, I have to copy this book. <laughs> Uh, and so my first homework assignment I assigned myself was copying Are You My Mother by hand. And I and I did like four pages and my mom was like, you can stop now. That's probably all your teacher wants because she knew I just wanted to be a cool kid with homework. You know, <laughs> I was such a sweep. But, <laughs> but that was it. And then I never it took me a ridiculously long time to think about publishing methodically. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Like, as a business, like. Right. I always wrote stories for my friends through high school. We would write collaborative stories, which were kind of fanficy, but we would self-insert our in the, ourselves in them just to make us laugh. And yet, all the time, I was trying to like. I uh, I think the first book-length project I tried, well, I've tweeted about this, was in like fourth or fifth grade. I wanted to write a book like Ben and Me about the mouse that lives in Ben Franklin's wig uh-huh. or Paul Revere and I about Paul Revere and his horse. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. thought, well, I'm going to do it's about the horses that got thrown off. And I was also a huge fan of the Black Stallion right. and the Island Stallion. And I, our history teacher had taught us it must have been fifth grade because she would taught us about the horse latitudes, which is where the horses, you know, the doldrums hit the, the boats, the sailing boats and they're stuck and they can't make headway around the, the oh. horn. And so they had to throw off all the ballast, all the weight they could, including the horses. And, so, and then the horses would like swim to land and there's wild horses. If they can. Well, that if was my can. idea. Oh, oh, like, oh. like probably they died and it's very sad, but in a way it was like a fix it <laughs> thing where I was like, I okay. was like, no, I'm going to do like uh, the, the, the black stallion, but it's all horses. There's no little boy and right. they all survive on the island. You mm-hmm. know, so. I didn't get too far, but that was the first book I tried to write in fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, we've got a comment here from Abby who says uh, she already read your book. Her mom oh, got it for yay. her. And she yay. says, uh, I read Girls Save the World in one day. Good job, wow. Abby. Oh, awesome, it's- Abby. And it's- it's not small. That is, it's a no. big book. Yeah, it took me two days, and I was like <laughs> setting aside hammock time to do it. Yeah, there you go. So, that's awesome, Abby. That makes me happy. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, tell us a little bit. I've told folks who've been tuning in this week about your book, but tell us the main idea of Girls Save the World in this one. What's it about? Right. It's about three best friends, June. Uh, is the main character and narrator, her two best friends, Siggy and Imani, who it's their senior year and they've decided they're going to celebrate by going to ZombieCon, the ultimate and undead entertainment, which is a fan convention featuring obviously apocalyptic horror. <laughs> and for the purpose of the book, I created a ripoff uh, Walking Dead style television show. Yeah. But the truth is this was based on we live not far from where they shot, right. where they shoot. In Sonoy. Did I so, see that you've been a zombie on the show? Yes, I have. You have? Yeah, and I need to actually That's tweet amazing. that. I keep I keep joking that I'm going to tweet tweet out a picture of screenshots of me. I joke that I did a I did my best work in the very far distance. Yeah. I added depth of field, you know. <laughs> You're one of those authors who takes research very seriously. Oh, yes. You're like, well, I'm going to write about you know, zombies. This is what I think is fantastic about being an author, especially, you know, you know, being a fiction author, what you love kind of comes back and loves you and it helps your brain. And so I just Mm -hmm. loved the show. We were like, let's go. And season two, we were like, let's go see where they film us near here. And my husband and I were both on season four. And towards the end of season four, they had the very first Walker Stalker fan con. 
which uh-huh. I went to. And oh, it was fun. very small, and it was the inspiration for ZombieCon. That's it's awesome. a huge con now. But it was the very first one, and it was the first fan event for the whole cast and crew. And I had been on, I had been a zombie, so I knew a couple people. And you could just feel the love in such a great way at, at that event. And everyone was just like, this is so cool. The guys doing makeup were doing zombie makeup on the first day of the con. They were doing free zombie makeup on whoever wanted it. That's awesome. And so I'm walking around the floor and it's a great experience. And there's a zombie and you're like, oh, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that looks scary. Oh, dude, there's another. And then I was like, man, if, if the zombie apocalypse happened while I was here at this con, how would you even know? Uh, and it just made yeah, right. me laugh so hard, the idea of how long could you play that idea out, that there's a zombie apocalypse happening at a zombie fan convention, and people just kind of laugh it off and push the guy off. Right, right. Or they think it's a cosplayer just too involved. And I, it made me laugh so hard, I was like, I have to do something with that. So that's where the idea came from, which is that kind was of funny. <laughs> getting an original idea in a zombie story is really hard. And I feel like you did <laughs> such a great job. It's like a critique of fan culture. Yeah. And... And it's really fun and it shows like a lot of love for fan culture. Like I just thought it was great. Yeah. I was saying, um, y'all, if, if any of the what the viewers are into that, go to my Twitter because I do plan to tweet all my pictures from Walker Stalker amazing. and my pictures from my screenshots. My husband, he was so lucky as the zombie. He got shot in the face. Oh, um, so oh you he got the hero. Oh, yeah, he oh, got the hero treatment. Hero I was just shot. off in the distance like this, you know. Like just uh, stumbling around. <laughs> Stumbling um, around. Let's see. We've got a couple more <laughs> comments here. Uh, Mary Kling says, Katie and I are watching. She wants Yay! to know, uh, when you write, do you write an outline first, or do you just sit and start writing the book? That's a good question. A great question. Every book is different. Every book is different. Oh, yeah. This one, though, the big advantage of, of knowing exactly what genre you're writing is that you know the beats, because it's generally something that you love. Like, you're not going to write... Uh-huh a genre that you don't love. So we've already talked about, I love zombies. So you already know you have the, well, first we have to get where we see the zombies happening and then we realize there's zombies and then we we run run from from the zombies zombies. and then we try to (laughs) solve the zombies, you know? And, and, And so, you know, the beats of that kind of action story. So then the rest of it is just figuring out who the characters are and how their growth of as characters plays into the larger arc of let's actually survive the zombie apocalypse or not. I mean, there is a great tradition of people not surviving zombie apocalypse. Right. Right. Depends (laughs) on what genre you're doing. Right. Yeah. This one I definitely, yeah, this one I definitely had an outline. I love, I love a, it's called the 15 minute movie method. Okay. And I first saw it. So speak of zombie movies and how, what we love loves us. Um, I love Shaun of the Dead. Obviously, it's one of the comp titles that I use to describe what this is. And I love the Cornetto trilogy. So Uh Hot Fuzz and The World's End. And him and Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright tweeted a picture of their outline for uh, The World's End. And that is such a beautifully structured comedy and movie that just is so rewarding to watch again and again that I was like, I'm going to study that. And then I realized that I didn't quite recognize the terms they were using. And I looked it up and it's from something called the 15 minute movie method. And it's, it's how I outline now because it, you just have to change it around. Sometimes the book is really cinematic. It felt like yeah. it was an adaptation of a movie actually. Yes. Like it, yes. Well, let's hope it goes full circle. Let's hope it goes and goes from book to movie. That'd be rad. I mean, right. That's <laughs> always the best. Uh, let's see. Kara, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your name, Kara. How did I never hear that story about your first book length work? <laughs> I love it. And there's a little emoji of a horse. Um, <laughs> that Kara's a friend of mine, obviously. Uh, yeah. We uh, we we joke about having dark stories and it's it's kind of a funny thing because this one is not. This is a zombie story with, with light and love and humor. <laughs> <laughs> but but writing something about the horses being thrown off the ship is pretty dark. <laughs> that, it's a little dark, right? Um, Abby says, I love how much of a thriller it is. And she oh, wants yay. to know... Uh, do you ever think, or do you think you will ever write a mythical book? Oh, uh, I would love to. I don't have, I mean, I think my favorite actual Greek myth is Cupid and Psyche. Oh. But there's so many great retellings of that already. Yeah. Like, I mean, C.S. Lewis till we have faces and great book. Just, just all these other ones. So I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. There's not one that's really taking up. And of course, Rick Riordan 
it, right. it's, it's such a powerhouse. It's hard to be like, oh, I want to do one. It's what? like, no, I just I like to read them too. Doing it in a YA setting would be really interesting. Yeah, right? yeah, it would be. Um, I have a see. friend who wrote a, a middle grade about muses, and it's a reimagined, you know, what if the, the Chantal Acevedo is, it's called Muse Squad, and it's coming out this summer. Oh, nice. And so if you're into that, check that out. That's going to be rad. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, let's see. The Scales family uh, wants to know, do you have a favorite character in your book? And it, <laughs> also, is, th is there one character that's most like you? <laughs> Okay. Well, um, my favorite character is based on uh, the actress who played Barbara in Night of the Living Dead. Uh -huh. I name oh, her, yeah. I name her Vivian, but her character is, uh, she's Janet O'Shea, and it's a very loose tissue covering over the original actress's name is Judith right. O'Day. And I met her at Walker Stalker. Oh, and she did you? Was so delightful and so wonderful. And of course, for me, that was that that was the first zombie movie I saw, you know. I could tell that you loved and, her in the book. And like, I just she's like met this her. kind, friendly. Oh, she was magical, beautiful, just 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 bright and just one of those people that you're just like, I love you. And they're like, I love you. And you're like, Yes, we do love each other. Ash, did <laughs> this you was true love? Did you send her a copy? I have not. I have not. I need to. I need to. You have I, to. I'm, I'm so, you know, I'm, a, well, spoiler, I'm afraid to. <laughs> well, I know. That's why I asked. I think that's really normal with authors, but I'm sure it would be like this honor to her. I'm sure she would love it. Oh, uh, well, I will totally do it. I've just chickened out. And uh, to follow up on that question, uh, the main character, June, mm -hmm. is based a lot on myself in high school. I have dyscalculia and struggled with what am I going to do? How am I going to make my way in the world? So that was very autobiographical for me. Oh, but my favorite thing to, to, to take step away from that is my author photo. Did you guys see this? No, I didn't see it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's a zombie. So oh, I'm man. all there. Uh, that's all me. It's basically that's really a zombie. <laughs> you know, Ash, one of the things I loved about your book is that, you know, almost every zombie movie is about something else, one way or another. <laughs> uh, That's true. Uh, whether it's you know racism or uh, yep. class war or something, uh, and your book is as much about female friendship as it is it about is. as it is about zombies, which I loved. I thought it was beautiful and beautifully Yay. done. Tell us a little bit about that. Like what uh, what brought you to that? Why was that important? You know, because I was thinking, you know, when you start writing about something you love and you start picking apart why you love it, it is thinking about the fact that every horror movie I've loved and especially every zombie movie is concretely about something else mm. as a beyond it. Um, like in Zombieland, the journey of Tallahassee coming to care for and, right. and be connected to other people. So connection. Mm -hmm. um, so for this one, I wanted it to be about girls. And immediately when I started it, I was like, it has to be that, that girls are the heroes because not always, but historically there's been a dominant male hero in the zombie genre. Not, not completely, yeah. obviously. Oh. We have Resident Evil and all these other great zombie uh, Ash, heroines. I, I would just say like for me, right, as someone who I've been immersed in that storytelling tradition, right? There were these moments right. in the book where I was like, oh, this is what's about to happen. And you would subvert it so that the women were <laughs> yes. the heroes, which is, I mean, spoiler, it's on the cover of the book. Right. And I was like, oh, wow, that's so deeply ingrained in me that you were able to surprise me by just yeah, making the wonderful. women be the heroes. I know. And that's, and that's the thing. And I was starved for that growing up. I mean, I, I wanted, I remember in the 80s and 90s, in the early 90s, there started to be more kick butt women action heroes. But in the 80s, you know, apart from obviously Ripley and Alien and, right. and stuff I wasn't supposed to see, um, uh -huh. there was a lot of damsel stuff happening. <laughs> so I knew from the start it had to be about girls saving the world. And I had had some, I have boys. And so it's been interesting to, to raise boys and think about raising good men how to raise good men to support uh, and be feminists. And yeah, I wanted yeah. to have, I wanted to have the girls be in the center and then also to say a lot about human friendship, but specifically female friendship, because there's yeah. so much um, drama that you see a lot of times with mean girls and um, where you don't always get context for why the girls are having friction or why care. Sometimes I feel like female friendships are glossed over in a, and um, 
a tropey or shortcutty cliched way. Right. Where where the the wounds or the injuries or why the one girl is mean is, is glossed over, and it's just well that's who she is because we need her to be bad or whatever. It so it really was really honest. important. Yeah. Yeah. I really wanted it to be authentic friendships and I wanted it to be friendships that had their strains. Like even though Imani and Ziggy are like the best of friends with June, like they each get on each other's nerves right. throughout the course of the zombie apocalypse, <laughs> which, you know, that's truth. That's happening in families mm. right now, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No comment. Right. Yeah, no, I think we're all. Yeah, thank you for that, saying right? that. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. That was a big goal. Yeah, I I thought it was really beautifully done, and like you were saying, I didn't feel like it was simplistic. It wasn't just like, of course, they're best friends; they're always best friends. There was like, yeah, you annoy me sometimes, or they were <laughs> right. pulling out the good things about each other. Like that's right. not true about you. You're better than that. Uh, right. And there's like things about forgiveness and sticking together and how right. relationships kind of shift depending on who's in the room even sometimes like there's a lot of really right. cool stuff in it I thought. awesome um, well thank you i hoped i had it's longer than i thought it was going to be i will say that <laughs> how long did <laughs> you think it, it would be arrived, when it first arrived i thought it was it's 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 a good i don't know if i could hold it up next to my other book but it's like it's several it's heftier quite a bit thicker <laughs> and yeah. i was like oh I thought I was clicking right along, but I, I guess I was. And also adding it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't read like a giant book. I will say oh, that. Oh, good. Um, yeah. It, I, I never felt like, well, oh, Abby got when it are we going to get to the next thing? I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was awesome. definitely. Okay. Okay. You're, you're going to want to answer this. I think Kit uh, Killingsworth wants to know, have you cast the movie in your mind? <laughs> The only characters I've cast in the movie is there are a, at the very beginning, there's a couple that are happily cosplaying zombies. Uh, I love that. And so that's much. me and my husband. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> In my head, because of us being on The Walking Dead, I was like, that's us. I have now put us in there. Uh, but apart that. from that you know it's it's kind of funny like in my mind all all a lot of my reference points are are just not actors that are acting today who would be appropriate age wise yeah although i think timothy chalamet should be hunter let's just say hey. that there you go i'm there putting it go. in the universe make it big <laughs> <laughs> that's fun i would love it i would love that to see it because it was such a movie in my mind when i was writing it also to see it would be fun uh, we have a great question from Katie, and I was actually just going to ask you about this. Uh, Katie wants to know who did the cover art and how did you pick this cover? I <laughs> love this cover, and it reminds I love it me too. of, um, I don't know if you know the comic book series Paper Girls. Uh, I'm not familiar looks, with it. Oh, you have to check it out. It, it looks might be really the same similar. artist. This is be. an Eis I lucked out. This is an Eisner winning uh, comic book artist who did my cover. Her name is Jen Bartell. Awesome. She's amazing. You can look her up on Twitter, hey, Jen Bartell. And I am so fortunate because she did not just the front cover, but the back cover, which, blah. Oh, has the, oh, it has the, I, see, has I read mine on ebook. I didn't even see the back yeah. cover. Yeah, I'm having such trouble with my directions here, but I yeah. I love it. So there's Blair and Hunter, and then we see the zombies all on the floor. That's and awesome. I love this one grabbing at her. Ah! I'm trying so hard. I'm just directionally challenged. Anyway, <laughs> y'all will have to look because I can't figure it out. But she, I, authors actually have no control over our covers. It's and true. that's, that's generally good because they, I feel like obviously it's not my job to be a graphic designer. It's to be an author. And I am so, I'm, I've been very happy with every cover I've had, but don't tell the others. This is my absolute favorite. <laughs> And I told my husband, I was like, if you think I'm not blowing this up at some point and hanging it really big somewhere, yeah, like, exactly. check yourself because it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mary and Katie say that they also love it. Uh, it's beautiful. I love the colors. And and uh, since you have the ebook, I'll show you the actual physical book under is such a beautiful, bright pink. Oh, wow. And it's got like metal, oh, nice. it's got, metallic like, blue. Going so on in the... It is fantastic. Man, they did right by Girls, you. Girls, they did. I'm very in love with it. Very fortunate. Uh, okay, I, I have to ask this. It may be too early to ask, but is there is there a sequel to this book? You know, we joked about this the other day. I'm very excited because um, I got a, a film agent looking at it. So we will see. I've never had that that I've been aware of. Yeah. 
people yeah. have been very like, tra la la, you know. Um, and so we'll see. And when we were having the phone conversation, uh, she said something along the lines of, and and if there's a sequel, we'll call it. And I immediately was like, girl, save the world in this one too. <laughs> T-O-O <laughs> right. or T-W-O, either one. And yeah. um, so there's not, but in my mind, like immediately when I turned it in, you know how sometimes you're just not ready to give up spending time with your characters. Yeah. At the end, well, spoiler, I uh, have them going on a trip and I was kind of like, hmm, maybe. If the door's open, trip, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's called Girls Save the World in this one, so no spoilers there. <laughs> right, right, exactly. But yeah, at the end, I make a, me a mention of a trip and I was like, that would be fun to, to have the sequel be on that trip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's we'll see, see, the scales are asking, do you have a rabbit in your window? Are they? Do I? Oh my gosh, I do. <laughs> oh, I was like, are they talking to me? Is there my is. rabbit in my window? No, it's leftover from you? Easter. The oh. kids, um, <laughs> the kids in the neighborhood. We've been changing out the stuffed animals in the window for when they go on their walks, and I just haven't changed out my rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, um, hey, we're coming to the end of our time. So if you have a question awesome. that we haven't answered, throw it in there. You still have time. Um, also I was talking to Ash about doing a giveaway and, you know, I do one every week, but Ash said she would do one this week also. So there's gonna be multiple yes. ways to get, when I say not, this week, I mean next week. Yeah. Next, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> show them, uh, show them the other thing you have as well. Okay. So I'm going to give away a book, uh, just like you, but I also have these little, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. Let me find it. <laughs> these little samplers. <laughs> And I thought um, if you follow me on Twitter, um, I will orchestrate my giveaways from there. And I will be giving away several of these uh, five, cha five chapter, first five chapter samplers. And I will give away one hardback to a, a big grand prize. <laughs> yeah. I was going to then... do, I, I was going to do another giveaway, but I haven't received my little, it's a zombie themed girl power themed. Uh, uh -huh. giveaway but i haven't gotten my stuff yet to give away <laughs> fun so ash you're gonna do your giveaway on twitter on twitter or? yeah okay. what's your twitter handle i'm at ash parso p-a-r-x-o because there were too many other people with that ns i'm guessing ash parsons yeah yep so, so ash, ash parso. parso okay cool yeah. and i'll put that i'll go in and put that in the description for this video also so people awesome. can find it uh, i think it would be easy if i just said if i'm gonna do the drawing next friday so that's one full week Okay, cool. I'll do the same thing. Okay. And what I'll do is uh, if you like or comment on either the Facebook or the YouTube video, then uh, I'll put you in a random number generator and I'll reach out to you and uh, if you win and I'll, I'll send you a copy. Um, and I'll do mine from Twitter somehow. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out. And figure we'll it out. <laughs> cross, I'll, I'll, when she puts it on Twitter, I'll put it out there too. So if you can find either awesome. one of us, you'll be fine. Um, okay, two more comments here. Uh, Cassidy says, thank you for being the best English teacher ever. Aww. I'm so happy about your books and I can't wait to read them. And then a heart emoji. Thank you, Cassidy. Really Aww. Yeah, Somebody's I used to getting teach. an A in English. I used to teach. If I could give an A for life, you'd get it, Cassidy. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> and then the Scales family are wondering if you have any pets. I do. I have two cats, a dog, and four chickens. <laughs> oh, wow. And I two, want a bunny. Two cats, a dog. <laughs> and you want a bunny. Before the show, I want a bunny I was just now that I've seen our, your bunny. Our bunny. Yeah, our sweet bunny. She went out to her to have some alone time, I think. Um, <laughs> oh, one more thing I did want to ask. Uh, a lot of the movies we've mentioned, just with zombie movies, tend to be rated R. Uh, yes. Your book, I don't think is. Uh, I don't think more so like either. PG, PG-13. It's PG-13 for yeah. sure. It's 12 and up. And I, I stand by that um, as a former teacher and as a parent. I taught okay. 7th, 8th, and 11th grade. And my kids are uh, 13, 10, and 7. Yeah, so I, so, I'm firmly in the kid mindset a lot of the time. But yeah, I, so there's I think, no cursing. There's no like sex. No, but there's no. There's action. There's violence, zombie action. Like action. Yeah. Yeah, zombie violence. If zombie it was, violence. If, yeah, if it was on television, they'd probably put it on at no more, you know, at eight or nine, and it might right. have a warning about violence. So, right. but there's zombies. <laughs> <laughs> there's, I mean, yeah, there's, there's zombies. zombies so you know, people are you gotta do them. zombie stuff. Yeah, it's not just a running zombie. You don't just <laughs> right. run. From it. You gotta. Fight. I got the zombies. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's really funny. So there are fast and slow zombies in this world, and they call the fast zombies zombies because they can <laughs> zoom along so fast. I wish I could claim that. That's just a, a beautiful fandom thing. <laughs> Love it. Zombie Love fans. It. Well, uh, Ash, thank you so much for joining thank us Thank you today. for having me. Uh, this has been fun, especially in the current world where we can't get out and do as much. This has been a great great fun for me yeah and it's great having you so as always folks don't forget to like or comment these videos wherever you're watching it it helps me and it helps ash to get this video out to more people and it helps all those poor people who aren't watching it right now have something to do for half an hour so <laughs> please do that and also if you subscribe you can see the other things we're doing as we go along next friday we're going to have jen reese with us who wrote a middle grade book called a game of fox and squirrels, which Ooh. is great. It's a middle grade book, fantasy novel about uh, dealing with abuse in a variety oh, of ways. Wow. Great book, great book. Um, awesome. Anyway, so thanks so much for being with us, everybody. Thank Have you. a great weekend. Uh, be safe, wash your hands, stop touching your face. Uh, and Carrie says, thanks for doing this. So fun. Carrie, it was our pleasure. Thanks for being with us. Awesome. Bye. I'm going to end the broadcast, but it takes like okay. three seconds for it actually. <laughs>